and uh, magnetic levitated trains being put in underground. Uh, and I had, this is one of these things, along with um, uh, 10, 15 investigations that had been brought to my doorstep, and I just uh, I sort of, I just put it on the back shelf, you know, because it was, something was going to take me an awful lot of additional effort, and uh, I just said, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into it. Let me just stay away from that. But now that was brought back under my nose, and I got thinking and, and doing more inquiry in a lot of directions as to what would it take to really scare these, the, let's say, the, the elite limited few that have their hands in our pockets, but what would it take to scare them so much that they would start putting uh, multi-million tons of uh, dried foods underground. Uh, why would they be buying all this weapons? What, are, what, what is it that possibly could cause them to have such fear? And, I, and then somebody said, uh, passed some information on and said, hey, you know, they're doing this in Russia and China and several other major nations of the world. They're not all doing it as profusely as we are, but they're all doing the same thing. So now I said, oh, wait a minute. Uh, and <clears throat> again, this is what brought in uh, back to the front of my mind was this business about Nibiru. So I started studying that from a scientific and an astronomical view, uh, the astronomy of that thing, uh, because the bottom line that finally lit, let's say, the light that switched on, is that this had been verified, the planet X being this uh, planet that theoretically is in a long, way far out orbital, uh, elongated orbit that comes back by uh, 3,600 years was what most of the thought was on it, that the orbit was a 3,600 year orbit. And when it comes around, that was what had created, in fact, uh, Noah's Flood. Um, the, the flood that caused the, um, most of the globe to be flooded. Uh, so I ended up, all of a sudden, I started having to study astronomy and the science of it and get into the history of Nibiru. Um, what was, was this potentially, is this really uh, something that mount, now may be coming back around? Uh, something that mount now may be coming back around, um, and and if it is, uh, you know, it, it's we're talking really serious problems for the for the entire globe. Um, but then that may also makes sense for 103 is the approximate number of underground facilities in the United States alone. The Russians put out a mandate for themselves. And I believe it was approximately in 2008, 9, 10, around that period of time, that they were going to have 5,000 smaller underground facilities completed by the uh, the year 2013. And uh, they do and have done that. They do, for the most part, have completed 5,000 of these smaller facilities, uh, not all as big as like I say, the ones in America. But the Russians did build one that could handle 60,000 people underground. And again, the timing was all targeting towards, in their case, it was 2013. Um, I started snooping around and found out that the Chinese uh, had also started converting thousands. This is interesting because I didn't know this Chinese history uh, like I know it now, uh, but uh, many years ago, uh, they had uh, progressively, there was thousands of underground tunnels that had been created by the Chinese during their own history. They were created for as hideouts and storage and military training centers for secrecy under the ground, into the mountainsides and what have you. So they simply, in most of their cases, they converted and upgraded 
some of these thousands of underground facilities. So now here we have Russia's got them, the United States has them, and uh, the uh, uh, the Chinese have them. Uh, and in the China's case, they also have hidden away all sorts of things, like entire battleship fleets, entire uh, major aircraft, uh, numbers of aircraft, but also as many as 3,000 uh, major intercontinental ballistic missiles uh, as well underneath, inside some of their some of their facilities. Now, in the United States, I found out we had taken NORAD, which of course had been the Cheyenne Mountain uh, underground facility for so many years. Uh, that had been utilized, of course, as the military watchdog for us to keep track of any potential uh, invasion of a major country for so many years. They had actually removed everything out of NORAD and converted that into a very well-shielded underground hideout, like we're talking about, for the, uh, for the very elite few that are going to be given tickets to get in underground when the time comes. Uh, and when I <clears throat> started looking uh, into Nibiru, uh, the history on it, it, of course, was amazing because... Uh, it's been out there and predominantly thought of as kind of almost a mythical situation. Uh, they had written it up very seriously in like Life magazine and Reader's Digest in about the 1959 to 63 period of time. And they had said that it had been found, uh, but that in a worst-case situation, we probably didn't have to worry about it for about 50 years. And apparently that was fairly accurate. And also, it was obviously put on the back burner for everybody, uh, saying, well, you know, we don't have to worry about it for 50, 60 years. Uh, I'm not even going to be around, so let's not even uh, be concerned with it. But all of a sudden now, uh, again, it appears that it was around 1983, when a report came in and was handed to uh, Ronald Reagan when uh, and, and he was told this thing is coming back and it is real and we're doing studies on it now and if in fact it comes back it's going to wreak havoc on the world and for those people that uh, uh, are old enough to remember uh, that was approximately when Ronald Reagan stepped forward on the floor of the United Nations and made this ex, uh, historic speech where he said, in fact, I wonder how uh, well we would get along with the, our, our, our enemies here on Earth if we all realized we mutually had some type of an extraterrestrial problem heading towards us from outer space. Everybody made the assumption that he was talking about aliens, which, of course, he may be, but uh, mixed in with this mess. But uh, basically, that was about the same time when, in fact, uh, Nibiru was pretty much verified to be on its way back in. And I believe that was actually the top thing that he was talking about in that strange speech. So, Bob, why don't, yes, sir? Bob, let me interrupt you just for a minute. Sir, please. Do you remember, ahead. too, at the time, and I'm, I, because this is critical, just as on my website have cataloged the dead scientists over the last 23 years of being on talk radio. Do you remember when the leading scientists, astronomers, were being whacked, murdered, uh, accidentally uh, off? <laughs> and when I say accidentally, that's, that's cynicism. Sure. Uh, absolutely. So, so can you just address that, too? Because, I mean, sure. th this is so unique, the fact that at the time that Nibiru, the 10th planet, uh, Gabriel's fist, Lucifer's hammer. It had all the colloquial names associated with it, and historically, the ancients knew about it. Planet X is the tenth planet. What What were some of your sources telling you about? We're oh, talking ser serious guys getting waxed. Oh, sure. And in a lot of them, a lot of them, uh, as a matter of fact, that uh, the, the assumption was that a lot of them were being whacked for uh, for for other reasons. And now, what I'm going to what I mean by that is. Uh, the scientists, as uh, a matter of fact, one of the worst was, uh, I believe it was 
Now, I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head exactly, but it was something like 12 or 18 uh, guys that actually were involved with um, uh, the astronomical studies were at a big convention in uh, Switzerland or someplace, and they all got on one of those gondolas that goes across the Swiss Alps there, you know, that wonderful vacation thing. And uh, and it, it fell, one of them fell to the ground and took out about 12 or 18 of the top guys that were um, really involved with that study at that point in time. Uh, that would be the, um, uh, and, and I mean, that was great for whoever uh, was set out to, uh, uh, they, they referred to them as mechanics, that were put together to to eliminate some of the people that were being too uh, talkative. Uh, anybody that might have been uh, potentially in line where they either had a lot of the good information uh, and may be morally inclined to let people know what was going on, uh, those people were being bumped off in large quantities. But additionally, which I mentioned uh, by the way, uh, I have the the new DVD that I just got. Uh, now it's finished and 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 is available for anybody uh, through my website. Uh, it's called uh, Incoming. Uh, that includes uh, the background history on some of what we're talking about right now. Uh, see, another person that falls into that category, believe it or not, would have been uh, uh, the uh, Princess Diana. See, Princess Diana would be one of the people at the very highest level uh, sitting in the uh, dining room of the Queen, if you will, and would have been totally ad uh, aware of what was forthcoming and also uh, one of the people, uh, the few people, that had more morals than political ties. And, of course, she had that extraordinary uh uh, a strange accident with her car that either blew up and or flipped over and rolled over in the middle of the tunnel in France. And, of course, uh, that always was left in the air and uh, et cetera, et cetera. The, uh, another person was Bill Colby. Bill Colby was a former head of the CIA. Uh, he had been retired, but he also would have known all of this and was supposed to be going back before a congressional inquiry himself uh, within a week or two, something like that. And he he was murdered. There's no question about it. It was a professional hit. He was uh, found, uh, said to have fallen out of his canoe in front of his house in a lake that he uh, had his home in front of. Uh, the only thing was that they didn't get into too much was the fact that for some reason he had interrupted having a, a clam dinner that, uh, and, a, and a $75 uh, bottle of wine on his table, and all of those things were like uh, not even half completed. And apparently he got this uh, mystical urge to jump into his canoe and go out and fall out of it and drown. Uh, so hey, he Bob, was hit. Let, yes, Bob, sir. Let me, just, sure. let me just interrupt something there because one of the people that's one of the sleaziest characters I've ever met in my life, he's dead now. Text said point blank. He, Colby was called out, and he was absolutely he was held underwater by a couple divers. In other words, sure. the divers had be, been prepositioned. So, you know, the sleazy individual who I'll just call him Tex said that Colby was called out. And obviously, if you remember too, that that all of the talk about him mysteriously drowning, well, that was all BS. But uh, I, I want you to, if you don't mind, to deal with Eugene Shoemaker, the famous uh, Shoemaker Levy. You know, he's on a road 310 miles north of Alice Springs in Central Australia, and he has a two-car collision. So somebody whacked Shoemaker. He's probably one of the uh, most famous ones. Brian Marsden. We're talking, and, and people have seen on YouTube, and I'm going to put this link up. By the way, I've linked everybody on my front web page while Bob is talking about these underground bunkers. He's done an exquisite job of photographs and telling it like it is. But one of the most interesting ones was Rodney March. Remember the guy in the Antarctic back around 2000? He was an Australian astrophysicist, and he died under mysterious circumstances. And that's why they were down there 
in Antarctica uh, when Nibiru, Planet X, could be seen from the Southern Hemisphere. If you take the deaths, and I'm going to turn right back over to you, Bob, of all the scientists, actually astrophysicists, astronomers, if you take them all, they all happened in the Southern Hemisphere. The two most famous ones were at the Atacama Telescope, uh, you know, up in Chile, and uh, let me just give this to you and then take it. Uh, astronomer Koichiro Morita and Stephen Rawlings, they're both uh, murdered, and they're all in the Southern Hemisphere. Now, you know, that's pretty amazing that these gentlemen are are all taken out. They're all in the Southern Hemisphere. It's all over pretty much a 10-year, or actually it's concurrent with what you're describing to the listeners is happening. I mean, right. I know you and I, 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 we did a show together years ago on that, but I mean, bring it right up now, we've got the same thing happening again. We've got astronomers and astrophysicists dying. And and also, again, which were the people that, that I w- was um, kind of specifying, um, uh, that that I did cover uh, in the uh, in the DVD is um, some of these other the the powerhouse political people uh, that th- themselves were bad guys. But see, like Bill Casey, he was another one. Now that was in the middle of back in the. See again, now we're talking. Uh, my my information was that um, uh, the 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 serious heads up was about 1983. Okay, Bill Casey, a couple of years later, um, he was about to go once again before, and he, see, again, he was a CIA chief, all right, the head of the CIA, and uh, during the Reagan-Bush administration, and uh, uh, he had kept his, uh, his mouth quiet and, and shut, and he had made a statement, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, as you know, and we're not going to mention any names, but you know a lady friend of mine back in D.C. You had talked to her a couple of times. Uh, if you'll, uh, again, I, I don't want to get into names at all. Yeah, I, um, I never talk about names on the okay, radio. All right, so but you, except, you know yeah. who you, do you know yes. who I'm referring to? Okay. Yes. And yes. she actually had been with Bill Casey for many years. Even wrote his speeches. That's how close she was. And her and I were extraordinarily close. And by the way, she's still with us, uh, thank goodness. Uh, and she's uh, older than me, so that makes her older than dirt, as he used to say. <laughs> Anyhow, the... Um, well, then we're both, uh, we're both in the sandbox because we're both uh, that's getting true. in that realm. That's right. The, um, uh, and anyhow, Bill Casey had told someone, he was, a, he was called back uh, one more time to go before the, for a congressional inquiry, and he had told somebody, he said... Uh, I'm tired of the whole thing, and I'm just going to let everybody know what's really coming in. And that was a quote. And uh, that that either the following day, I believe it was, he came in, had his regular cup of coffee, and put his nose down in the cup, and that was the end of it. And they took him away and gave him a lobotomy at the hospital. Uh, anyhow, and within two days he was dead anyhow. But they gave him lobotomy so he couldn't even talk. To anybody at the hospital, and then of course. And then, I can, hey, Bob. Bob, yes, one of the interesting things about that, and again, ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to give Bob the maximum amount of time. But what's critical? The reason they gave him a lobotomy was simply to cover up the fact. And this was by Bill Casey's uh, oh, right-hand man, um, oh, the guy that they wrote the book, The Secret uh, Man, about uh, Frank. And I, I can't remember his name, but he, I interviewed him for three times, and he said they put a plutonium needle in Bill Casey's uh, uh, sun visor in his car, and they wanted to cover up the intense radioactivity burns on his brain. And that no, was and from sure. uh, that. That was from the guy. And by the way, I think he he you know is now a bodyguard for a famous Hollywood producer. Very tough man. And I can't think of his name. Someone wants to send me an email. But saying that, Bill Casey, and and just one more guy that we got to bring up really quick. Really quick, Doctor Robert Harrington. I mean, one of the guys sure. that was the leading. Uh, uh, and most outspoken man talking about Planet X, he gets whacked too because he headed to New Zealand. And, and um, you know, the the point being is is that when you were doing your investigations and all of these events uh, were coalescing, I mean, in essence, they were trying to cover up Planet X 
and in those days, I was interviewing guys who who are you know well placed, and they were calling it Gabriel's fist. Obviously, there had been a book written about Lucifer's hammer, but you cannot separate the depth. Uh, and these aren't minor guys with little telescopes. These no, are that, the most true. famous who's who in the world of, of Wait, astrophysics. With- and when you when you're talking and and I by the way I cover Robert Harrington cover all of this in my DVDs the uh, Robert Harrington was the head of the United States Naval Observatory and had for several years been feeling and believing that there was this huge body out there with the potential of coming back in he had heard again all of the other miscellaneous stuff and he actually ended up sitting down with and it was uh, fortunately, it is on a, a, a video. He finally sat down with uh, a Dr. Sitchin, who, of course, was the linguistics expert who read the Sumerian clay tablets and had um, uh, put the, the uh, translated those tablets. And we're talking thousands of uh, four thousand year old clay tablets that, in fact, described the planet X coming back around and he finally got the phone call that he always wanted and that was from somebody of some credible astronomical skills and it was Robert Harrington and Harrington had sat down with him they recorded their meeting and Harrington told Sitchin in his face and on camera he said you have been right all along I have found planet x the 10th planet it is out there and people and i can and he said i know where it is i can pinpoint it at this point in time and by the way this is a long time this is back in the 90s and uh, it was a short time after that when robert harrington died of what i call uh, one of these instant cancers uh, he he uh, got feeling ill had not even finished his formal report that he was working on on planet x he became feeling ill short time later hospitalized and then a short time later he was deceased it was almost the same cancer that um, ruby the fellow that had assassinated oswald in front of everybody's face ruby died of almost the same cancer where he was feeling ill one week while he was in the in the um, uh, in jail for killing oswald uh, and trying to talk to everybody and blow the whistle on stuff, uh, and which they were keeping that quiet. But anyhow, he also came down with that instant cancer where he's not he's not feeling too bad one day, and within a week or ten days, uh, he's he can't be talking to anybody, and he's uh, and then he's gone. So anyhow, that was another one. But uh, uh, Harrington was in fact the uh, the head of the Naval Observatory for the U.S. government. See, so that was a guy there that was uh, that had found it, and they certainly couldn't have him making an official worldwide report that this thing was coming back and that he had found it. Of course, he didn't know when it was coming back, but uh, he had actually physically located it. And being the position he was in, the U.S. government couldn't say, oh, that guy's a jerk. You know, or he said he drinks too much wine or smoking the drapes or something. Uh, They can't, they couldn't do that kind of a number on him. So um, he had to come down with something and they eliminated him real fast uh, with this uh, instant cancer, as I call it. Uh, additionally, well, pl- and, and again, the plutonium, the plutonium, whether it's plutonium, polonium takes a little longer. By the way, the name of the guy was Frank Dukes, okay? And yes, he wrote Frank a book, and name. yeah, and I'm sorry, I interviewed him, I think, uh, man, a half a dozen times. And uh, thank you, Randy S, for letting me know that. Uh, we're talking, we're talking 15 years ago, but right now, I think this, here's a, a secondary title for this the show tonight their bones cry out from the grave they were all who's who they were all preeminent they were all specialists they were all if you will you couldn't have more respect in the astronomical community and so the point is ladies and gentlemen this thing has ramifications and i and and i bob just so you know i put up a link to your website, lady, as as Bob is talking, I'm putting up links 
number one, to his website, so you can go and see the amazing underground bunker stuff, and then to the dead uh, scientists, and uh, just as you start to, especially dead astrophysicists, astronomers, this is why we have become, we are a bloody, these, I'm just throwing this in, we are a bloody nation. The truth must be killed, the truth must be quashed. And Bob, will you just, because I want to know this, I forgot, when did you get hit with that weapon that pretty well whacked you out for a number of years? What year was that? Well, um, as a matter of fact, there, all right, um, there's been three attempts to, to take me out. Uh, one was a, a vehicle that physically drove through my wall, a glass wall, sliding glass door, actually, in Florida. And that was way back in 87 when I was literally, uh, I was still, uh, and that was at my point of employment. And at that time, I was involved with the Iran-Contra stuff and uh, very, very serious heavy duty, uh, dealing directly with Senator Kerry at that time, the Secretary of State, uh, today, uh, not, you know, whatever, and I'm putting a judgment on it, but he was doing serious inquiries at that time. Um, uh, so that was the first time it was a serious hit. This guy literally, his vehicle went through my wall, a sliding glass wall, actually, and got hung up on a planter. This was in Florida. Got hung up on a planter, and his front vehicle of his station wagon, it was like 17 feet long, fell about eight inches in front of my desk is where it got hung up and stopped, uh, literally. So it was only by grace of God that I made it out of that one. Then there was another Amen. attempt. There was another attempt, and there was also a, a setup to throw me out of the window of about a 17th floor building, uh, a hotel room in Orlando, when I was uh, to be interviewed by the two investigators for the Iran Contra business back then. And I surprised them by showing up with my lawyer. So, and by doing that, uh, it, it messed them up because they did not even have a piece of paper or a recording device with them. The intent was to uh, uh, have me exit one of the windows at this uh, hotel. There's no question about it. So anyhow, the um, in 1996 uh, or seven, uh, I'm trying to exactly. I'm not positive. Uh, I was uh, asleep. I was sound asleep in my in my bedroom in uh, Los Angeles, California at that time, and um, uh, I went into a uh, a grand mal seizure, uh, and just laying completely sound asleep on my back. Um, my my wife jumped up, called the ambulance, which uh, came was rather quick, fortunately, because the seizure maintained up to the very moment that you could hear the sirens, the police, and the ambulance coming up my street. And then it stopped. And uh, the bottom line is, after doing a lot of inquiry, et cetera, et cetera, what had taken place was I had been hit with a microwave weapon. Uh, and I wouldn't have believed it until later on the doctors kind of almost verified it. Um, uh, and uh, even, believe it or not, some writings out of uh, Tesla's own experimentation what had happened was I had been hit with a microwave uh, from from our ground floor where we were. Uh, I was right uh, about 18 inches away to my right was uh, uh, large uh, glass doors that we utilize in Florida and, and uh, Orlando and over in um, uh, Los Angeles. And someone had broken down a piece of the fence, a wooden security fence in our garden on the outside, had broken it down inward, and that was where they had been uh, approximately 15 to 20 feet from the window. Uh, and I had, uh, this weapon had killed another fella in the identical manner about a week after he did um, the uh, Conspiracy Theory Show, uh, an interview with, um, uh, what's his name, the fellow that does the, Jesse Ventura. Um, Jesse Ventura's program. Uh, Jesse had, uh, he was talking about weapons. This fellow was talking about particle beam weapons, et cetera, to, uh, to Jesse. And about a week after they had filmed it, uh, he was in his kitchen standing at the window 
fell down into a grand mal seizure and his heart basically exploded uh, during the seizure and of course he died. Uh, and that was literally like two weeks after they finished the filming. Coincidentally, I was working on um, one of my uh, uh, investigative DVDs uh, at that time. Actually, I guess it was VHS back then, but uh, relative to weapons also, which I thought was interesting. But what this is, is the microwave affects your brain and uh, put me into these, uh, this convulsion. But what the, the downside of it was this. And it's physically described in, in Nikola Tesla's own paperwork, which is amazing. And he said that uh, if you apply this voltage uh, in, in this uh, particular wave uh, form, uh, when it exits a, the mass of your arm bone, shoulder ball of your bone of your arm or your elbow, it will explode the bone. And that was exactly what happened. Once I recovered, was taken to the hospital. Uh, of course, they tested me. There was no reason for me to have had that seizure. It didn't show up any reason at all. And uh, But the big deal was it literally blew my left shoulder ball of my arm, completely blew it into small pieces. Uh, and the description, uh, with no external marks whatsoever, the description that was given to me uh, with the first surgeon that looked at it was, uh, what in the world happened to you? It looks like a bomb went off in the middle of your shoulder. How did that right, happen? That's a, and Bob, Bob, let yes. me interrupt you. At the same time that happened to you, I was interviewing a lot of people. Now, again, I can validate this stuff. People say, yeah, sure. At the same time that this happened to Bob, and at, at, you know, I think uh, within a, a period of time after that, we were on a radio show together, and I got a, a, a briefing from somebody in the, let's just say this, every day is Halloween world, that you, know, you had been hit with a shockwave weapon. And a shockwave weapon, it, it fits the bill of exactly what you described. It's actually, if you will, a, a resonating uh, waveform that literally, you know, fractures everything. It's kind of like if you if you were letting uh, a, a bomb, uh, even a firecracker. I'm trying to make this really simplistic. Hang in space. That's what happened inside you. So, yeah, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, I just want to I want to validate something. Bob's on my radio program. You know, obviously we talked about this. The point is, is that they tried to kill him, and I would be the first to tell you, and you know I've always told you this, you know, you're alive by the grace of God, period. There is no yeah, way and, most people, yeah, and there's exactly no way most people can come out of that. Exactly what happened was um, that uh, uh, the, the, the seizure problem stopped, just boom, like it was switched off uh, as soon as uh, the um, uh, the ambulance was within earshot. Whoever was doing it was right there, and then click switched it off and 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 got got on out of the way. Uh, you know, j whatever it took off uh, for for parts unknown. Literally at that time, uh, and the description uh, amazingly literally was written, uh, which which I found out about a year later uh, was written in paperwork uh, relative to a demonstration that um, uh, Nikola Tesla was doing for students in, in a, at a, uh, one of the uh, colleges or universities with doing some of his crazy electronic stuff he did, you know, where he would actually shoot himself with these things, what have you. And he described it verbatim. He said, if you did this and you did that, the, uh, the closest mass of the bone that it would go through, uh, it would totally blow it into little pieces. All right, now, as far as my condition, this has now been 17 years since that event. My shoulder, uh, the replacement they put in it was no good whatsoever, and uh, I had, uh, I've not had the use of my left arm. It's totally hanging free, disconnected from my body. So that, you, I knew you would ask that earlier, I think. Uh, somebody had asked my condition on that. Uh, that's my status. Technically, I'm considered to be 100% disabled. I am uh, without the use of the arm, and uh, I am in pain 24 hours a day for 17 years. But anyhow, and I don't talk about this very much at all. Well, no, and I think, but I think, yeah, look, here's, let, let me say this. You paid a price to try and warn people, 
and you've you've been on the top, you've been on the cutting edge, you've been in the middle of. I don't think there's any place you haven't been. And now, lady, the reason I asked you to tell that story, okay, is because you know, uh, after being on on talk radio for 23 years, I've become jaded in some areas, okay. And one of the things that I'm jaded in is the fact that that there seems to be a total disconnect from the death of all these people or the bioscientists and the release of bioweapons, the, you know, the fact that the, the largest amount of money in the world is going to uh, literally uh, prepare the bureaucrats. By the way, that's happening in Russia, and there's been very few people who have ever been from the west inside Yamanato Mountain. That's the equivalent of what you're describing of how huge that's some of our underground one. bases. Right. Yeah, right. so, that's, yeah, and that's it's... The big one. The, the, Yep, Yamanatu. It's so big, ladies and gentlemen, you can fly airplanes in it. That's how big it is. So, Bob, as we are now, okay, the, and I want people to get this DVD because not a day goes by that people don't ask about Nibiru. The reason I haven't dealt with it is because, number one, my focus has been on other things, and I'm not going to, uh, you know, number one, you're, you're the guy that's done it, you're the, and why should I try and do what you've already done and done so remarkably well? And everybody's got to, you know, play their part. But tell me right at this moment, and, you know, we've got the next hour. Now, you only want to stay on for two hours and only feel you can stay on for two hours, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll I'd be glad to get back yeah, well, as soon well, as it makes sense for you guys, too. But, uh, yeah, right. I just underwent a small surgery. Uh, and, okay. And, 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 and as a matter of fact, let me, add, let me add this to that. Because of that, that event, that started a chain of other things. Uh, I've had blood clot problems, and I have had, uh, since we spoke, you're not aware of this, as a matter of fact, I know that. I've had three heart attacks. I've had a, uh, a, a stroke, which was a, 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 lung, a lung embolism, uh, and uh, uh, I have to be treated on that on an ongoing basis. And a small amount of surgery is very frightening. Uh, I almost bled out about one year ago with a small injury. So um, uh, I'm like walking on thin ice all the time, and I realize it. So uh, I try to be careful. That's the only reason I'm not doing an extra hour or two tonight is because I just did recovered from uh, uh, surgery uh, uh, that I had. Sure, and I understand that. So if I'm rushing you, I no, want to no, no, get okay. to the... Yeah, and I don't mean I to, but, yeah, but this is such an incredible show. And, and I just got a, 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 an email from one of my friends who's an incredible intercessor prayer warrior and just saying, you know, this is a heads up that everyone should be praying for you. Because, look, you've, you've been on the, you know, the front lines. And you know what I, I always get a kick out of is people who have never even recognized there's a war always seem to know more. And, and what's fascinating to me about this is that the reason why Nibiru is now in, in – uh, plain sight, and it is, you know, I mean, I've put posters or put pictures on my, I, I shoot a lot of backlit stuff, I'm shooting into the sun, good lenses, I know the difference between lens flare and a secondary body, and the point being, we are seeing, even if you will, pyramids, almost the pyramidal shape over uh, the sun, I've been a 43 year, uh, in the, I've been a photographer for 43 years, so saying all that, what is right now? your most current information on Nibiru. And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to go to BobFletcherInvestigation.com because there's a lot of stuff out there. Go, go ahead and you know uh, spend your life on search engines, but Bob has put it all together. And from experience, and not only from experience, but when I have him share his life story with you, and I mean as it relates to his investigation, and those who have wanted to take his life out of his story, as in kill him, murder him, assassinate him, I think it puts you into the realm of this is real. This isn't the horse manure, typical uh, mud-slinging, don't get it, uh, uh, morons, I'm sorry to use the word, but this is real. So, Bob, where are we right now? Because we can take the, you know, we'll, we'll do a break in eight minutes uh, at the top of the hour, but the point is, where are we right now? Because people can get your DVD, see everything, I, I mean, where where are uh, your most recent information? Okay, what right. what are you being told? Uh, the, all right, the um, uh, one one person uh, that um, uh, that I consider to be really 
pretty um, a- a- accurate on the on this. All right, he's been doing it for a long time. He's a, an astronomer uh, per se. He's at um, 120,000 hours or something like that behind a telescope. Uh, and and I don't pretend to be an astronomer. Again, I, uh, I put together the best information from the best places and best direction, and that's what I tried to do. Uh, my expertise is criminals out of Washington, but when it all fits together, it fits together. Um, it, it appears that uh, Nibiru, the people ask, when is it going to hit? When's it going to? It's not going to hit us, as a matter of fact, but it's going to pass close by. <clears throat> uh, the, the best... Um, educated analysis on it at this time is, <clears throat> excuse me, at the very earliest potential is that it might be, it should be seen in the December of not not this December, but potentially the earliest would be next December, and that it would take a couple of months after being first seen to pass close by, and that could fall someplace in the middle of March, the following March. Okay, so you got December, where it'll be visually, potentially started to be seen as a star, all right, as a single star, and we'll start getting bigger and bigger as it moves closer to go around the sun, and then head back out again, and... Um, uh, all of the everything studying uh, uh, astronomy, studying the historic ancient writings, studying the Bible, studying all of the other ancient documentation of actually when this was seen before uh, and logged in. All right, uh, the last time that it came around, uh, all of that, everything, doing the math, the changes, the variations on calendar, types of calendars and all of that, the closest possible time is not this coming March, but one year from this March. We're talking about 400-some days or whatever it would be from today. All right. right. Now, what about now, the effects? Now, uh, we've we'll already effects, seen the effects. Excuse me. All right. The, uh, the effects, yes. First off, we are already feeling the effects. And by the way, almost everything I'm telling you here is graphically put together in the DVD, which is a double DVD. It's two discs, and I I tried to cover it so that every legitimate question could be approached, and that's what we tried to do in it. And again, like you said, I even have some live footage of the underground facilities. Um, I have all the figures of what they spent and all kinds of things that are way above the, the call of duty, so to speak. The, um, the effects, here's where we're at right now. <clears throat> the crazy weather that we just participated, and we will be, it will be terrible this whole winter. This whole winter is going to make people crazy. I will tell you that much. Uh, the weather from this point forward, actually going back about six months, starting six months ago, um, the weather on the globe will never be like it ever was in your lifetime. Uh, you're going to see weather changes and variations and extremes that uh, that just never have existed since we've been keeping records. All right, That was put into the DVD before last month's crazy, or last week's almost, that weather that came in where we had the frost going all the way down to New Orleans, the freezing and, and all of that extraordinary snow and, uh, what, 20 feet in Buffalo, New York, et cetera, et cetera. All right, that was in my DVD before, uh, before last week, obviously. Um, here's what's taking place already, first off. Now, this is literally, this is scientific material here, folks. This is stuff where you, you can... Uh, in, You can look this up, Uh, absolutely look this up. The planets have been heating up, starting out by Pluto and coming inward. All of the surfaces have been changing. They have been heating up, for one thing. They have had storms on the face of the planets that they have never seen before, ever, since records were keeping Now, we're talking the heating and the jiggling, the wiggling, if you will, in their orbits of all of the planets starting out by Pluto and coming inward. 
Now, a lot of this stuff is really being kind of, it's out there. You can find it. Uh, you know, you have to look it up a little bit with some specifics. But this stuff has been kind of kept quiet. It's just like everything else, you know. Uh, another thing is, as we speak, uh, the the volcanic activity, volcanoes, have started up. A couple of weeks ago, we had 45 volcanoes going off simultaneously in the globe, around the globe. We're having earthquake and movement that we've never had before. They had that they had a crack that just plain opened up down in Texas uh, near Mexican border uh, about two, three months ago, whenever it was. Uh, these things are all part to the moving in of Nibiru. We have an increase in the meteor, comet, falling star, shooting star activity, et cetera, et cetera, because here's what's happening. Nibiru is headed back in. Uh, it has a size mass estimated to be five times that of the Earth. You could put five Earths on the diameter across the uh, the face of uh, Nibiru. It has five moons traveling with it. It also apparently has a lot of iron oxide, and that iron oxide, as it passes close to other planetary bodies, etc., uh, it gets it drags it off. And there's where the old, the winged planet comes from. Some of the older pictures and drawings, you can go to all these ancient, even on the, the walls of caves, for crying out loud. They have paintings of when it had passed by, and it looked like, quote unquote, the winged planet. This is iron oxide that is blowing off of this, if you will, uh, on both sides as it plunges back to come around the sun. When it finally gets here, we will have... Noah's, Noah's waves again, the flooding of Noah. Um, we also have here on the earth already, we're having much more melting underneath, like, a, like an internal a, um, uh, activity, underneath many glaciers they are melting. Now, people say, ah, oh, well, so what, that's some of that global warming stuff and blah, blah, blah. Down in Miami, every high tide... As we speak today, every high tide is coming in four to six blocks into Miami Beach City proper. Every high tide. The city of Miami Beach had to get special funding. They spent multi-millions 90 days ago, or whenever it was, maybe six months ago at this time, uh, to put pumps into the city of Miami Beach because of the high, the high tides now moving beyond the beach all the way into the cities and trying to keep it from uh, flooding out every hotel along Miami Beach. As we speak, all these things are going on, but unless you put them all together, individually they don't mean very much. The animals... Bob, yes, yeah, Bob, hold on and for the second hour of that.